Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about the cheapest lens for each of Canon's two current full frame lens mounts. Both of them are a version of a 50mm f1.8. The first one is the EF version, which is the 50mm for the full frame DSLR mount that Canon has. And then the second is the new RF version, which is the 50 millimeter for Canon's new mirrorless mount. But today I wanna to look at the differences between the two, talk about the pros and cons, strength and weaknesses of each two, the image quality and performance, and talk about maybe who each of them might be right for. So first of all, physically to these lenses, they're both very similar in size and weight. They're both very small. The RF version is actually the smallest lens on the RF mount at this point. They are both made entirely of plastic, except that they both have a metal lens mount, which helps the lenses to be a little bit more durable, but neither of them have weather sealing and neither of them come with a lens hood. Really the main difference between these two lenses is the actual lens mount itself. The EF version obviously has the EF mount, which means that it can fit natively with any of Canon's DSLRs, whereas the RF version has the RF mount, obviously, and that means that it can only work with Canon's full frame mirrorless R series cameras, which right now only includes the RP, the R, the R6, and the R5. On the EF lens, we have a focus ring, and this is an electronic focus by wire ring, and then we also have a switch to choose between autofocus and manual focus. On the RF lens, we also have one ring, but this ring can either be used as the control ring, which you can set up with the R series cameras to control anything from a large list of options like ISO, shutter speed, aperture, white balance, and more. But there's also a switch to choose whether you want to use it as that control ring or as a focus ring. Unfortunately, this RF version does not have a switch to select between autofocus and manual focus. So if you do want to switch that, you have to do it in the camera's menu itself. And that's a lot slower. And if you do manual focus or switch back and forth between autofocus and manual focus at all, that can be pretty frustrating. So as far as photography goes, obviously both of these lenses are 50 millimeter. And for me, if I was going to have to only pick one focal length for photography, it would be 50 millimeter. Because for me, you get that compression a little bit at 50 millimeters, but it's also wide enough that in most cases, as long as you have room to step back, you can get a wide enough shot. And with the compression combined with the f1.8 aperture on these, it helps in low light to have that fast aperture, but when you want those blurry backgrounds, you can also get it if you want it. The autofocus performance on both of these is fast and accurate. If you were to put them side by side, the RF is slightly faster, but honestly, in actual usage, I haven't noticed a difference because they both perform really well. The minimum focus distance on the RF lens is pretty good at 30 centimeters or just under one foot and just beats out the EF version a little bit, which has a minimum focus distance of 35 centimeters or 1.15 feet. And that can help a little bit if you're trying to get closer in on your subject. So at the time of recording this video, Adobe has not released lens correction profiles for the RF lens in Lightroom. So all of the images that you're seeing right now are without any lens correction, and that's for the EF and the RF version. And I will say image quality is very similar between these two. There is a little bit more sharpness in the RF lens, although the RF lens is definitely not as sharp as other RF lenses. And for me, it feels like we are getting a little bit better color reproduction out of the RF lens than we are with the EF, but it's definitely not worlds apart. These aren't very different in terms of image quality. With both of these lenses, I think sharpness is good for their price point. I will say one difference between the two is that the bokeh on the RF version is a little bit cleaner and especially cleans up a little bit faster when you're stopping down the aperture. So as far as video goes, the first thing I'm gonna say is that neither of these lenses have optical image stabilization and at 50 millimeters, your micro jitters are gonna be more prominent than something a little wider. So it will show up in your video. Having said that, all of the R series cameras have some type of image stabilization built in with the RP and the R. It's several forms of digital image stabilization. And with the R6 and the R5 now, we actually have on sensor image stabilization and that will help offset that a lot. 
image quality in video is the same as in photo. The RF is going to be slightly sharper, have slightly more vibrant colors, but that's really just very slight differences between the two. And I think both of these lenses have good image quality for the price point. The slight differences that they do have in image quality with sharpness and color are pretty easy to fix in post. And I would also add that neither one of these is necessarily the best option if you do a lot of handheld filming. So which one might be right for whom? First thing I would say is there is a little bit of a price difference. The EF version is usually about $125, but goes on sale for around $100 every now and then. And the RF version is $199. It just got released, so I don't assume that it's going to go on sale anytime soon. Having said that, the EF version is obviously for the EF mount. So one thing with that is that it is going to be compatible with DSLR. So if you're upgrading from a DSLR to the mirrorless full frame camera, you can still use the EF version with your DSLR. If you decide to keep that as a backup camera or something, you can't do that with the RF lens. However, in order to use the EF lens with the R series mirrorless cameras, you will have to get an adapter. And a couple of things about the adapter is, first of all, it's actually going to change the size so that the EF version with the adapter becomes quite a bit larger than the RF lens. It also evens out the price so that it's either the same price or just a little bit more once you add in the price of the adapter. Of course, if you bought a camera in a bundle or something where you already have the adapter, that's not necessarily going to factor in. Also, because the EF version has to have the adapter, it also gives you the option to use something like the ND filter adapter so that you can have an ND filter built into your adapter behind the lens and you don't have to worry about buying an ND filter that fits onto the front of this lens. And that way you can use it between multiple EF lenses regardless of their filter size. The RF lens, because it doesn't require an adapter, it is the smallest lens that you can pair with any RF mount cameras at this time, but it doesn't have a dedicated autofocus to manual focus selection switch. It doesn't have a dedicated manual focus ring, but it does have the option for a control ring that the EF lens doesn't. Of course, you could get around with that if you decided to buy the adapter for the EF lenses that does have the control ring. So who should get which one? I think if you already have the EF version and you have the adapter already, there's no real need to upgrade here. There's not a huge bump in performance unless you just really want to get rid of the adapter. If you are coming into the RF mount and you don't have any lenses, you don't have the EF version already, I do think the RF is a better choice just because you don't need the adapter. It's going to be smaller and you do have a little bump in image quality and performance there. But overall, either of these lenses give very good quality for the price point that they're at. And if you're looking for a budget way to get into the RF mount, I think either of these lenses with something like the RP, which is currently the cheapest full frame mirrorless camera that Canon offers is going to be a great option for that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think between these two lenses? Are you looking at getting one or the other or maybe upgrading from one to the other? If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button. See you guys.